Hi everybody. Uh, today I am working on a wreath. I think it's going to be my last Halloween wreath, even though it is August 31st when I'm filming this, but you won't see it until October? I don't even know. Like, my schedule is just all over the place. This is a... Crappy, crappy pair of scissors. Really? Come on. Okay. This is a 20 inch non-lit basic wreath. Um, I bought a bunch of these after Christmas and I have like three left. So it's a good thing they'll be out in like two months at Walmart. I have stretched it into an oval. There's a circle. All I do is pull it. Um, I've done that in a couple other videos. So it was already pulled. I'm going to fluff this out. Because even though we're putting deco mesh all over this and you're not going to end up seeing any of it, I want to be able to have all of these ties, have access to all of these ties. And usually when I do these, I kind of, you know, fluff everything out so nothing's smashed, but then also make, me my, make myself like a little trench down the middle because that's where all my deco mesh is going to be concentrated, pretty much. So yeah, these wreaths, um, they come pretty flat. They are, I mean, they're crammed in a box, and, and if you look at them on the shelf, it's just like, oh, even though it's $2.50, you're like, is that worth $2.50? I think they're like $2.53, I'm like, they're not, they're not bad at all. Um, but you're like, is that even worth buying? But once they're fluffed out, they are a nice base, base wreath. I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't go so far as say like, oh, this is a nice full Christmas wreath because it is just pine, but you stick a bow on it, some lights, whatever you want to do. It's a nice base for adding other things to it. Or you could just put this up on your, your door by itself. Just, you know, fluff it out first. You want to get your 250 worth. Oh, I should have scanned that tag and seen if they, um, they have the price on the Walmart app, but it's probably just going to say, you know, like not available in your store. Okay, so you just want to go through and fluff that out. See, and now it's got a little bit more heft to it. I am using this black and gold because I don't have any black. Um, and this gold, I bought this for Saints Wreaths, but this is like a laser gold, so it's kind of holographic. You know, it's, I mean, you can see it's not like just straight gold, it's kind of rainbowy gold. So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use this mesh. Everything's cut at 20 inches. These are two 10, 10, uh, two 10 yard rolls. Um, it's just the purple and orange and a black. I'm gonna be using a lot of mesh. I'm gonna be using a ton of ribbon and I am going to get the scare, not the scare row. I'm gonna get the skeleton in this wreath. Hell or high water, the skeleton is going in this wreath because I've tried to put him in almost every wreath I've done and it hasn't worked out. So let's see how we're gonna do this. Um, yeah, these are cut at 20 inches, and I'm just going to fold the edges under and ruffle them up. If you have any leftover mesh, this could be a great opportunity to use it because, um, you know, we're really going in, see this is like, we're really going to go in a pretty pretty hard on this wreath. I think I'm going to just spread a couple around, you know, do a couple of the pattern ones, go and do some black ones, come back in with some pattern ones. This is not like working with a wreath form where you have a certain number of ties you need to fill or you want to fill, I guess. You just need to kind of make a even distribution. I'm just doing ruffles because 
I feel like anything else would just kind of be a waste of time, kind of. See, I'm going to speed through this because you've seen this a hundred times. Just get them in there, give them a nice twist. I'm going to have all mine coming up like this, like they're laid in this way along the Like not like this, like not across the reef, like going along with the reef. So when I put more in, they'll start to stand up like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna speed through that and I will catch you guys on the other side. Super secret long version chit chat time. You guys think this is still a secret? Like, I mean, we're getting away with something, right? Oh, so, like I said, it is Monday the 31st. August has finally drawn to a close. That means we only have four more months of summer down here in New Orleans. I, was, I had therapy today, and I was like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to get dressed, I'm going to get out of the house, I'm going to drive to the city, I'm going to go to Michael's, I'm going to go to my appointment, I'm going to go to this place and that place. I got out, I got up, went outside to take the dog out, and I was like, oh, um, yeah, uh, I'm not, no. I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to do any of that. I said, it's so hot. But I needed to go to Walmart, so I was like, let me, let me try. So I left and went to Walmart, and before I got from my car into the building, I was like, nope, I'm staying home today. Not staying home, staying home, but just like, staying, going back home, rather. Not going to my appointment, not going to the city. Oh my god, it's just like... It was so hot. And I just, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. We're gonna, I know I know that, that cool front is coming. I know it's coming. I know my plants are going to die once it gets cold. I don't care at this point. It's been so hot. I'm just like, hey, if y'all going to survive me not going out there and watering y'all, then y'all deserve to survive. If you can't survive this, you know what? Better luck next year. It's just, it's so... Whew. Today I'm like walking around Walmart and got my mask on because why not? Also, it's um, it's you know like mandated. My nose is all stopped up. I didn't take any of my um Flonase before I left, so my nose is stopped up. It's hot as hell outside. It's hot in Walmart. I don't know how that Walmart is always so hot. How is my mom alive? Do not know. Um. I'm walking around, I'm just like, you know, drawing ragged breaths through my mask that I'm wearing. Can't breathe out my nose. Like every time I, I find myself alone on an aisle, I pull my mask down and I'm like, <gasps> so yeah, I went to Walmart because I needed popcorn, which I forgot. I've been craving popcorn for like, I don't know, a week now. I've been to the grocery like, I don't know, a hundred times by now. And I just, I'm like, nope, I'm not, I'm never going to remember to get this popcorn. But my mom told me that Friday they started setting up the mods for Halloween. Like there's a separate team that does that and then the associates like fill it. So I texted her this morning. I was like, hey, is it worth coming up to see Halloween? And she's like, no, it's all the same stuff. And I was like, did they have any of the vintage stuff? No, they don't really have anything. Same stuff as Friday when I was here. So I was like, oh, okay. So I get there and I'm like expecting nothing. They had like everything. And I was like, mom, what, what do you think I was looking for? She said, well, you said you wanted like the vintage stuff. And I didn't see any of the stuff you showed me in the video. I said, okay, well, the video we watched on Saturday was Michael's, first of all. Um, secondly, 
this is like almost all of the Halloween stuff. So she's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't pay attention to things. And I was like, well, thanks for that, first of all. So I'm like going through the Halloween stuff and I'm looking and it's like, there's nothing spectacular. They sell these little, I would go get it, but I am exhausted. Um, these little vintagey looking, they're like resin, but they look like paper mache, like old vintage. They have like a, the one I got today is a pumpkin and like, he's like a pumpkin wizard. And I know I have like a cat and I have like a little ghost or a witch in a dress or something. They're super cute. And they usually have, the first year they had them, I didn't even see them in store. Like I just saw them online. The, uh, the last year I bought two of them. And then this year they had the two that I bought last year plus two more, but I can't remember the ones I got last year. So I just got the little pumpkin wizard thing. Um, super cute. Have absolutely no need for it. I just think, um, I just really like them. They didn't have any costumes at which I don't care about that. Um, but yeah, they had a, a nice assortment. They had a couple of little cute signs. They had a, um, I'm obsessed with blow molds. If you don't know what a blow mold is, um, Google it carefully. It's one of those plastic, I mean, you've probably seen them in like, probably every Christmas movie you've ever seen. It's like a big plastic figure and it's got a light bulb in the inside. Um, and it lights up and you put it outside or, you know, wherever. They used to be super cheap and like, I remember my mom, we had a house, we were growing up that was down the street with us and they had like a thousand of them. Like they were super big in like the sixties and stuff and the seventies. They had like a thousand of them. Mom was like, that is the tackiest house I've ever seen. Cause my mom was like very restrained when it came to decorating outside. She's like wreath on the door, plain white lights and all the boxwoods. And I was like, eh. but um, you have always been like obsessed with the uh, Christmas ones. And Michael's has a couple of Halloween ones this year. The vintage ones are just like, I'm never going to be able to buy one of those. But Walmart had a little pumpkin this year. And I was like, oh, it's a little pumpkin. I said, it's probably like 10 bucks. I can get it. Um, you know, I'll put it God only knows where, because it's not like I have room for anything in my house. And I went to go look at it. It was like $20. And I was like, mm. if only. But it also had like a like an LED light inside of it. And I'm like, mm. I don't know. But yeah, they had some cute stuff. They had a bunch of that crap that just like, like motion activated stuff. I can't even tell you guys how much I hate that crap. I'm like, okay, well, um, if you want that for your house, that's fine. Do we have to have 14 of them activated at Walmart? I passed. And I was like looking and I passed in something and it started passing in front of something and it started screaming and I was like, it's too early. It's, it's seven o'clock in the morning. It's too early for this little headless child on a rocking horse to be screaming at me. I don't even think there's a, uh, an appropriate time of day for that anytime. But yeah, I got my little my little wizard pumpkin. I think it's, I don't even remember anymore. My little wizard pumpkin thing. Didn't get my popcorn. My mom was, I was in there and I was, you know, I was getting ready to check out and she's like, I'm going to lunch. And I was like, it's eight o'clock in the morning. She's like, oh, I got here at four. And I was like, oh no, she got here at 3.30. And I was like, um, okay. She's like, do you want to come over to my house and eat? My mom makes this thing. I don't know, it's gotta be a local thing because it's named after the school. It's called Holy Cross Macaroni, which is basically just meat sauce mixed with like elbow noodles and cheese. Um, she's like, you wanna come over and eat a Holy Cross Macaroni? And I was like, I literally ate breakfast like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I was like, it's a little early for me to be eating tomato sauce with breadsticks, but um, yeah, I'm good. So she went home to go have lunch and I was, I went home and I was like, I'm going to go stop at Dollar Tree to see if they finish putting out the Halloween stuff because they are slow this year. And then I was like, ah, it's too hot. 
got home, sat in my driveway for, I don't know, like 30 minutes, just like sitting and looking at stuff on my phone because I was like, I want to go back out there. It's so hot. If you're new to my channel, uh, me not being able to handle the heat is a running theme this year, and it will be next year, and the year after that. And then I'll become so popular that I won't make videos anymore except when I have something to sell. You ever notice that happens with people? Like, they, because they, get, they make so much money on YouTube, they start selling something, and then they only show up and post videos when they have something new to sell. And I'm like, okay, I'm not buying your crappy makeup. I'm not doing it. Oh, you're charging $60 for an eyeshadow? That costs 25 cents to make? I'm not buying it. I'm not contributing to you. Botching your face. Makeup channels are wild, y'all. Oh, I left this straight on here. Look at I uh, came home, I had my appointment with my therapist, and he's like, how are things going? And I'm like, uh, I'm sad. So we've been talking about, I was like, yeah, you know, I went to the doctor, you know, all my, my blood work was fine, you know, my blood pressure was fine, I don't have anything physically wrong with me. I said, I'm just like, unmotivated, and I get in mental health talk here, um, trigger warning. I get in these cycles of not being able to find a, 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 a topic. Come on. I get in these cycles of, okay, how do I explain this? Like here's like, you know, your baseline okayness, your normality here. I'm usually here, just under baseline of not feeling great about myself, about my life, about whatever. Um, occasionally, I'll peak at the baseline. Might be moments where I just kind of do like a little uptick momentarily, um, but usually right underneath. And lately it's been like down here and it's kind of like this. Um, so, you know, I told, I, I told my doctor, I was like, listen, I just, you know, I'm just, I don't know what's going on. Like, I just don't feel right. I just, you know, like, I, I have these moments where I have trouble breathing. And she's like, anxiety? And I was like, it can't, like, I can't blame anxiety on everything. And then she's like, you can if nothing else is wrong. Um, so I was telling him about that. And he's like, you just need to, like, be mindful. And that, you know, this whole pandemic thing has been going on for a while. There is some kind of end in sight. You, know, you just have to like keep reminding yourself of that. And but it's been, I mean, the last couple of weeks I have just been either I went from like manically working because I'll have like episodes where I'm like manic for a while, not like bipolar manic. I don't want to downplay anybody's. Um, I don't want to be like oh I'm manic in that sense. I'm not manic in that sense. It's just. I'll have episodes or times where I am just going, 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 because I have it in me to go, 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 go. And then, like, the past couple, the past, it's not even the past couple of weeks, it's like the past 10 days or so, I've just been kind of like, I don't really feel like doing anything, like I don't have motivation to do anything, I'm tired. Which I did. I would talk to my doctor. I was like, I'm so tired. She's like, it's a thousand degrees. Everybody's tired. I was like, it's so hot. She's like, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> like, don't, don't, because she knows, like, I am the first person to say, I'm really tired. Um, I'm probably going to die soon. And she's like, no, you're probably just tired because it's incredibly hot. This is starting to fill up. So now I'm just like, okay, what do I need to put where? But yeah, so I talked to my therapist today about that. I talked to him about 
some other stuff. I showed him because um, I was sitting, I was sitting in my office because my back, my back was killing me this morning, and I was like, I am, I refuse to have a therapy session through telehealth while I'm laying in my bed because my back hurts. So I went and sat in my office um, in the chair that I never sit in. Cause I'm always at my desk chair working and I was just sitting there crocheting and I was like look I'm making this and he was like oh my god he's like what is that and I was like it's a thing I'm making I don't want to say what it is because I don't want anybody I don't want my mom to you know hear, hear it in the background me talking about my mom Michelle Jen my sister anybody you know um so he's like um is that fun for you and I was like oddly yes I don't really know why. I said, but it is, I think it's because, like, one of my big things he always tells me is, like, when I'm feeling anxious, which just is good for anybody who has, who has anxiety or who, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where you're, you don't have an anxiety disorder, but your anxiety is heightened for whatever reason. You know, you do this thing where you breathe in through your nose, you count for like 10 seconds and then you breathe out slowly, exhale through your mouth. And focusing on your breathing is the only thing you focus on. You don't focus on, um, you know, I'm having anxiety about this or, you know, this happened or am I gonna pay this bill or what's going on with that? Like you're just focused on breathing in, counting to 10, exhaling, doing it over again. And regulating your breathing helps to calm you down. It helps you to focus. So. I said, this works so much better for me than the breathing exercises. Like there's plenty of times where, hey, I can't, I don't have crochet. Like if I'm driving and I, I get anxious, I, I can't like, you know, start crocheting, stop pull over side of the road and start crocheting. I said, but it's so meditative because it's just like, especially the patterns that I'm working on, um, just very, it's the same stitch. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm doing variations of the exact same thing in different configurations to make this finished product and I said it's just it's so uh, you know like uh, it's like Whitney Houston's waiting to exhale that's what it's like um that's a good movie Angela Bassett she goes off you haven't seen Angela Bassett go off and waiting to exhale. Stop what you do. No. Finish watching this video. Watch all the ads. Go to my Etsy. Buy a wreath. Subscribe. Comment. Like. Um, follow me on Instagram. Tip me on Venmo. And then go watch Waiting to Exhale. That's a great movie. What needs to go here? Because I've got purple, purple. I'm counting those as the purple. Purple, purple. Purple, purple. Purple, purple. purple, purple. But yeah, crocheting has just become like this thing where I guess knitting was supposed to be like that for me. But my thing with knitting was if I messed something up, that was it. Because I didn't know how to fix anything. And I couldn't find how to fix anything. And like, I couldn't like, I feel like crochet on YouTube, everybody's like, all right, I'm going to tell you how to make this thing. And they show you how to make it. And it's, it's like... It's like, okay, now just repeat the last two rows until the project is finished. So it's like they can make a 20 minute video telling you how to make a, a scarf or a shawl or a, a cowl or a hat or something. And like with knitting, I had so much trouble like reading patterns and even really simple ones. Because that's just like not how I learn. Yeah, I know how to I know how to fix problems when they happen. Like I can just pull back and like when I when I even when I knew how to fix something with knitting, if I had to like pull something out a couple stitches back, it was like a punch in the gut because it was so hard for me to do. Like I was the slowest knitter. And now I don't feel bad about the massive amount of yarn that I have all over my house. So yeah, that's what we talked about. It's just like, I'm always looking for something where I can just, I don't have to focus on it so much. And that's what crochet is.
wondering, it's done for me. I want to film a video um, kind of going into that a little bit more. Just like how I finally figured it out. Because if y'all have known my, my struggle, I mean, I've said, I know I've said in videos before, like, I was like, oh, I can do anything except crochet. And now I'm like, hey, I can kind of do this. Like, I'm not going to be making a sweater anytime soon. I still am not 100% okay with, like, chaining 153, you know, make 153 chains and then, like, go into the 14th one and then do this and do that. Like, that still makes me nervous, but, um... A lot of that's just because I don't really understand, but the more I watch and the more I do it, like, even if I do it wrong, like, I started this cow at dinner at my mom's yesterday. I just grabbed the thing of yarn, I grabbed the matching crochet hook, I took it with me, and I just started chaining, um, I think I chained, like, 50, it was a super bulky yarn, joined it, like, in the round, and then just started, like, crocheting into the chains, and I finished it in like three hours and I was like, I can't believe I have a finished product in three hours. This would have taken me three and a half months if I was knitting it. Even with super big needles, super big yarn. Um, but yeah, the more, even like I was doing that and I was like, something's not right about this. Like it doesn't look right. So I take it out and try it again. It still didn't look right. And I was like, okay, well obviously if it doesn't look right, it's because I'm not doing it right. So let me study this, figure out why the other two stitches look great. And this one looks weird and go from there. The only thing I don't like about working with grapevines, not grapevines, with evergreens is that there is still plenty to put in this wreath. And I am not running out of ties. It's just, I'm cramming a lot of stuff in here. So when I go to add my ribbons, when I go to add my tubing, when I go to add my embellishments, like I'm gonna have to wire all that in. And the only reason I am using a evergreen, in case you're like, why is he even doing that? Why isn't he just using a form? Is because I need a, I need it to be longer for the skeleton. And I could have done like a, one of the awareness ribbons, but those have, they end up being like really tall. And I want this to be long and flat pretty much. And I'm probably gonna end up smushing it some more before I add a, the rest of the stuff to it. Alright, let me see. This side looks good. This side is still needs some help. So is anybody else just ready for summer to be over with? I'm, I'm just like, <sighs> that first day where like the high is 70, I'm just, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna take whatever I'm working on, and I'm just gonna like hang out with the dog. Cause I feel bad for him because he's like, I wanna lay outside in the, in the scorching hot sun in the 108 degree heat index and just chill out. And I'm like, we can't do that. Like, I can't leave you out here by yourself because of um, possums and the crazy people who live around us. But I also can't stay out here with you because um, dehydration, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, uh, heat rash. So once it cools down, he will be very happy. He's a happy dog anyway. My sister's dog went to heaven this Friday. Which is just, it, it's like, ugh. It was a, that was a good dog. Kind of dumb, but um, a good dog nonetheless.
I went Chad with Bozeman. Oh my God, you guys. Oh, I saw, I was on YouTube. Was it Friday or must have been Friday night? Um, I was on YouTube and I saw like somebody doing a live and they were, it wasn't like a, it was just like in the recommended. It was like Chadwick Boseman dad at 43. And I thought it was one of those like clickbait things. And I was like, first of all, Chadwick Boseman has no way he's 43. Like that's ridiculous. He was 43. That is more shocking to me than him having cancer for the past four years and still making all those movies. He was 43. What? Um... So I saw it and I was like, that, I was like, that's stupid. I was like, why would anybody put that on there? And then like I searched and I saw it and I was like, oh man. Like, come on. Like, what a legacy, huh? I mean, I think anybody who was part of that Black Panther cast to like, make a movie that had such a huge impact that was so... I mean, like, we're talking about a, we're talking about a superhero movie. Like, let's not... Let me not dress it up and say that it's, it was Schindler's List. Um, it wasn't. But it was an extremely good movie. One of the better Marvel movies. And to just... To say, I'm going to have a majority black cast in this movie, and this is how it's going to be, and look, it made as much money as any other movie we've ever done. More, in some cases. Like, I just think to be a part of that must have, to be the main part of that, like, that must have been, like, incredible. Um, as an actor, as a black man, as a black person, like, just... And everybody, like, you, I, I haven't heard... You know, usually when somebody happens there, you know, somebody dies, everybody's like, oh, this, you know, so-and-so, poor thing. And then there's inevitably somebody who's like, well, he was a jerk. I have not heard a single negative thing, like, from anybody. Like, no people he's worked with, no fans he's had interactions with. Angela Bassett posted a thing saying that when they were together, like, for Black Panther, um... You know, like she introduced herself and he was like, oh, this is, you know, I've actually met you before. And she was like, oh, she's like, you know, she didn't remember meeting him. And he said it was because she was, I think she was getting an honorary degree from Howard University when he was there. And he was a student they chose to like escort her around the campus um, the day of the ceremony or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, man. And then like to come full circle to be like starring in a movie with her as your co-star. This is very sad. Okay, what am I doing? Now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I need a tie, and where are they? Yeah, I was like bummed about that. And then I kept seeing people on there were like, well, what's gonna happen to the Black Panther movies now? And what's gonna happen to the to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And you really care about that? Really? He gets recast. The character is still alive person who plays him is gone. Let's uh, give a little respect to that. I just can't imagine, you know, four years of cancer and to film the amount of movies he did during those years and the type of movies he did. You know, like, full, like, heavy action movies. Wakanda forever. That's all I'm going to say. Except for all the other stuff I've already said. Okay, I need something right here. Where there's, there's just, like, this mass of, like, unused everything. I think I only have a couple pieces left. That suits me. Come on. That suits me just fine. I 
these over here. I hate when people like are like who is it that died? Oh like when Naya Rivera died. Oh my god. So many people this year. Um when Naya Rivera died, like everybody's like, oh you know, it's like I feel so bad for her and her kid and you know other people like she's a celebrity she didn't even know you existed but if you like I don't like when people downplay how you feel about someone dying whether you knew them or not whether they knew you whether you were ever going to know them in any capacity like Glee was a big deal you know like when it was on it was a big deal like you identified with those characters if you were of that age when it was on like you really identified them if you were like a high school while it was on um, so I'm sure, like, yeah, every little boy and probably some little girls wanted to grow up to be Black Panther. Like, you wanted to be somebody in that movie. Except for Martin Freeman. Did anybody want to be him? I don't know. That's like, it's like mourn who you want. Why does it bother you if a celebrity's death upset to me, you know? People are just so rude. I keep trying to make like more rum in this wreath. It's like I'm making rum, but the wreath just keeps getting bigger. So let's do the, yeah, I'm going to do, because this is like a lot of the purple and orange one. What? No, what are you doing? You're not, we're not doing that. I don't know what that was. gonna have to take a, a quick intermission after this because I forgot to get something to drink and my throat is like the Sahara right now. So I'm trying to get this one in like over here. Don't forget your sides when you're making a read. You would think the people who don't like, who don't watch the, this is a lot of like black and gold over here. Well, let's add more. People who don't watch the long version of this, like, they'll watch a short version and they'll be like, what is he doing the entire time? He's, he's putting all that mesh in there. And then they go and watch a long version and they're like, oh my god, he is so disjointed. I'm like, yeah, I went to Walmart. They had Halloween stuff. I'm super depressed. Chad McBothman. My sister's dog. Vintage Halloween. The Heat. see there's a very little green showing and we have a nice you can see it better from this side a nice uh, oval kind of wreath what I might do is come back and just spread these apart some more see like all of these are used but like there's a bunch here that aren't used what was I doing over here I was like doing the most in case I need to pull some of these from the back to get them to the front to tie in other things. I really want my skeleton in here because I want to know where to place things, but I cannot put a three foot skeleton in a wreath and then try to work around it. I was going to try to take him apart, so like I was not working with his legs, but my mom was like, you're not going to be able to get him back together. And I said, it's one screw. And she said, I don't care, you're not going to be able to get it back together. So he's going to go over here to cover up some of this. I'm a little heavy handed with the black and gold over here, I think. 
Um, so now, let's add, um, let's cut, let's, <laughs> I'm like, let's, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna go get something to drink. I'm gonna figure out what we're doing next. We're probably gonna cut some tubing and make some bundles and then we'll work on bows and ribbons and uh, get our skeleton in, get our florals, get our ornaments, get our whatever. Okay, my base is done. Over there. I am trying to decide on some ribbons now. I think I'm gonna use this one, this one, because I want more purple and I don't have any big purple ribbon. And I'm gonna pair it with this Harlequin, this dot, and then a couple of pieces of that four inch ribbon, which is somewhere in this general vicinity. But I'm gonna add those later. But first I want to make all my bundles. I don't know, I think I'm gonna, I know I can get 18 out of here. I just don't know if I want that much, but I do want a big grand um, <clears throat> statement wreath. A grand statement wreath. Okay, so I already took these out of the bag, so nobody would be like, oh my god, the bags. Which, I also am like, when I'm doing it, oh my god, the bags. So I have the orange, the purple, the Halloween green, because there's also a Halloween, there's also a fall green. Which is a little more olive-y, kind of? Um, and if, I don't remember, I can't even remember which wreath it was at this point, but whatever one where I was cutting these and they all came out the wrong size, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen this time. Also, hopefully that they're not all tangled up. So... Oh yeah, they're definitely going to get all tangled up again. So I'm going to cut these the length of my cutting mat, which is 24 inches. I'm not going to stretch them, I'm just going to gently lay them out. Because I want these to be big and loopy. will get 18 because these are never as right. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut all of these and turn them into bundles. And already there's a thing. Okay. Welcome back to super secret long version chat video time. I wish that there was actually something cool we could do for people who watch the long version of the video. Besides me just being like, oh, yeah, oh, God. there's got to be a way to um to do this better than the way I do it. Which I don't know what's wrong with the way I do it. Usually throwing stuff on the floor and just hoping for the best works out for me. It's actually really just this purple one, I think. Oh, speaking of purple, I started crocheting both the thing I was talking about this earlier. The cowl I made. I should have grabbed it. And I should have grabbed my little Halloween wizard, who I realize is not a wizard at all. He just has a pointy hat. Okay, I lied. I'm, I'm sorry I lied to you guys about this not being a total mess. Um, my little cowl that I made is purple, because last time I was at Michael's, they had a giant ball of that, um, the lion, but it's a yarn by lion, lion brand. It's, um, like their Woolies Thick and Quick. It was a big ball that was, I think it was originally marked like $12 and I got it for like three. And that was the ball I grabbed yesterday and my cowl is like the prettiest dark purple. So I don't know who's getting that for Christmas, but um, somebody is. I 
was in the middle of watching uh, the new episode of Lovecraft Country when I was like, let me go work on this wreath so I feel like I've accomplished something today. That show, it feels rudderless. I don't, I don't, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, discount it because it's only the third episode, but I'm like, what are we doing here? Why are we all over the place? Why is it, why is it we were dealing with one thing and now we're dealing with something that is completely different? And is that what the, I mean, it almost, the third, I'm on the third episode now. The first two episodes definitely went together. This last one just feels like, I thought it was like a completely different story, like it was an anthology series, until they mentioned the stuff that happened in the previous episode, and I was like, oh, okay, I just don't have, I have no idea what's going on. That show, I mean, it's like... It's a hard watch. Because I'm like, God, can't y'all just leave these people alone? Because without spoiling it, it takes place in the... I'm guessing like the 50s or the 60s. They're not very clear on... I mean, they, they probably said it a hundred times, and I'm just like... Unless they're taught... Unless they say like, hey, um, how you doing? It's 1953. Like, I don't... I'm not gonna... I don't have the attention span to figure out what year it is. But like, it's all these black characters that are dealing with this, like, racism like, constantly. And I'm like, jeez, how, 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 ugh, leave them alone! Like, a bunch of the characters just moved into this house on, like, the white, in, in the white area of Chicago. And all the neighbors are, like, putting up signs. I'm just like, oh my god. Like, if, 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 if the civil rights movement wasn't even a thing, like, if we never had to deal with this, if, um, like, say there's this ultimate history where we don't think we own other people and the civil rights issue is never an issue because everybody has rights. If I, if we lived in that world and I was watching this show and the things that these people have to go through, I would be like, this is ridiculous. Like, they are just, they are just going too deep on this. But it actually happened. And I'm watching it and I'm like, huh? How? How? I'm like, what the hell is wrong with people? Like, if this was a completely fictional story and every part of it is fictional, I'd be like, they're really leaning kind of heavy on this one, this one thing. But it's like, this actually happened. And it's in Chicago. Like, it's not like it's in Mississippi. Like, if it was in Mississippi, I'd be like, Okay, if it was in Louisiana, I'd be like, okay. But, like, I thought things were better in the North for some reason. I don't know why. It's just like I'm watching it and I'm like, why is everybody such a jerk? you really want to kill people because they're different than you like you want to you want them to not be alive anymore i don't know i guess i feel the same way about people who uh well i was trying to think of an analogy there but i can't even come up with one I think it's because I grew up in the South, but not, like, I wish I could say I came from a family where everybody was just, like, as progressive as I feel I have become as an adult. Like, let me tell you something right now. Let me tell y'all something. Have y'all ever been invited, if you were a white person, have you ever been invited to an authentic family cookout by your black friends. 
or adversely, I know I've done this a hundred times because I live in New Orleans, going to a restaurant that was a black family restaurant. Listen, I don't care what kind of prejudices you have. You are not going to tell me that ain't some of the best damn food in this world. Almost as good as my mama's. I think I, I told this before about my own. Um, this guy that used to work for um, my grandpa and my dad. Uh, Mr. Willie Bridges. I, hope, I, I, don't, I don't know if he's still alive. I think he's still alive. He seems like one of those people that's going to live forever. He's probably still alive. Even though I thought he was like 90 when I was a kid. So he's maybe 120 now. I don't know. His wife made the best fried chicken that I've ever had in my life. And normally my mom would probably sense that I just said that, get in her car, drive over here and slap me in the face. But her fried chicken was so good that my mom and her, <laughs> mom, she would send fried chicken to work with Mr. Willie. What's her name? Oh, Helen. Helen. Miss Helen would send fried chicken to work with Willie when they made it. And in return, my mom would have to send her potato salad. And I was like, you can make both of those things. I was like, why don't you make, you know, she was like, I can't make the fried chicken. And Miss Helen could not make the potato salad. She probably could. She just like really liked my mom's. So it was like every, every couple of weeks, my mom would be like, um, like I'd see my mom make a potato salad on like a Wednesday. And I was like, what are you doing? A potato salad is a weekend food. She's like, Helen's making chicken. And I was like, oh. But she wouldn't send like a, it wasn't like a whole chicken. She would send like a couple of pieces. And I was like, oh, can I have some? And she's like, um, no, you can't. You will go to Popeye's and I will eat Miss Helen's fried chicken. But like, you miss out on so much. Like these people, like I, I keep, it's because I just watched this and it's like fresh in my mind. Like, if you're not friends with a certain group of people, like say you don't like Asian people. You know how much culture you miss out on? You know how much food you miss out on? You know how many experiences you miss out on? Like my friend Cindy, she's Vietnamese. Um, she took me to a Vietnamese restaurant one time, had never been, not for any reason other than, I don't know what, what the hell Vietnamese food is. I went and if it was not the most like delicious, I was like, wait a minute, y'all eat like this all the time? It was crazy. We had pho, my first experience. My mom was blown. Instead of doubling these over, I am just going to do them like this because I want them to be big and loopy. Um. Yeah, so I'm like, whenever I see something like that, I'm like, think about it if you just base this on one little thing about these people that you don't get to experience because you're racist. Like, I don't get it. I hope that like, if I have kids, they like, they'll be able to grow up and be like, not even understand race. Like, I don't want them to have to understand that it's a thing. And now I want fried chicken. Look, look, did I not cut all these? Okay, they're not as bad as they were, but still. Um, yeah. So, like, that's a really good show, if anybody's looking for a show to watch. I just, I have no idea what's going on, and I don't know why people were such jerks. And I, I, I want to say, like, I don't, I don't know why people were such jerks in the 50s, but um, it did not get much better. Like there's a, like there's like a cross burning scene where they burn a they burn a cross on these people's lawns and I'm like this actually happened like wrapping my head around that like I knew that happened like I know like knew that happened but like I don't know to see it like done so bluntly and to see 
I guess because it's on HBO, like, they can get away with a lot. Like, the stuff they say, the things they do, I'm just like, oh, man. But if you like, um, spooky, spooky shows that may or may not have a point. And, like, such good actors, too. Like, everybody in there is, um, is really good. Uh... I don't know who any of them are, except for... Because I'm, I'm not good with people's names. Like, I've got to be like... Like, season three, I'll finally know everybody's name. Um... But, uh, Journey... Isn't her name Journey? Journey Smollett? J Jesse Smollett's sister. She was in, um... Was she in the Birds of Prey movie? She's in there. And... One of the guys I know from something else. Oh, and, um, what's his name? The guy from Ghost, Fitz, from Scandal. Uh, he don't have no eyebrows, but he makes it work. The white guy, he's in there for like 10 minutes. But I'm also, at the same time, watching, um, I don't know this is this is going this was in like 2002 uh hbo had a show called carnival or carnival or whatever it was amazing it was some of the best television that's probably ever been produced and it was so expensive that hbo was like hey you need to get this to under two million dollars an episode or we can't make it anymore and the creator was just like we can't do that so hbo was like all right we're not making it anymore and it was like it left the biggest cliffhanger Ever, that was later explained by the creator. Um, but I watched it when it aired, when I was like 20. You know, like, mostly an adult, but not really. So I told my friend Michelle, I was like, I'm watching it, and I'm trying to see if I understand it anymore. And she's like, what do you? And I was like, nope, not really. Not, not much. And I told her it makes me want to watch. Like, we used to watch, like, David Lynch had, like, this big thing, you know, like, after Twin Peaks and everything, like, in the early, early aughts. Is that what it's called? The early 2000s? Like, with, like, Blue Velvet and Mulholland Drive and Lost Highway and all those movies that I watched. And then, you know, me and Michelle were both like, oh, my God, that was so good. And then later we admitted, you know, 10 years later, I was like, when I said that was so good, I was hoping you didn't agree with me because I had no idea what happened. She's like, oh, no, I had no idea what was going on either. I just said that. So, you know, I could pretend like I knew what was going on. I was like, oh, my God, me too. So I told her, I was like, I'm going to rewatch those movies and figure out what they're, what they're about. And she's like, don't do that to yourself. We're never going to know. But I've watched stuff as an adult that I watched as a kid. And I'm like... Oh! Oh! Like in Dirty Dancing, there is a character who has a procedure done, which God only knows what YouTube is monetizing and not monetizing now. She has a procedure done. And I, I, don't, I, I, I don't remember it at all from when I was a kid and saw Dirty Dancing. Maybe I should have been watching Dirty Dancing as a kid. I don't know. But, um, like, years later, somebody said, oh, yeah, when she has the procedure done. And I was like, no, she doesn't. I was like, that's not in there. They're like, yeah, that's, like, a huge part of the movie. And I was like, are you sure? Because I don't remember that. And they're like, yeah, that's, like, a, a big, kind of, like, a big deal. This is, look at this. Sometimes you get some like these. Can I fix this? Sometimes you get sums like these. You heard me? I guess I can fix it. I don't know if that was worth it. Um, yeah, I was watching something else that I... I'm watching The Karate Kid right now because they just added Cobra Kai to... Um, they just added Cobra Kai to Netflix. And I was like, oh, well, like they keep showing the little preview. And of course the preview looks good because they're going to show you the best part in the preview to make you watch it. So I'm like, well, maybe I want to watch that. But I was like, I should probably rewatch The Karate Kid just to remember, like, what's going on. Because I don't remember. 
and I started watching it and I was like, this has not aged well at all. Like not, not even a little bit. Like, oh, you have a grown man beating the crap out of a bunch of teenagers? <laughs> Like, okay, you work, Mr. Miyagi, but, um, yeah. And I was telling my mom, I was like, can you imagine today if they had a movie where a person of color beat up a bunch of white kids? And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> he, like, pops out of nowhere, and he starts, like, just beating down on everybody. And I was like, yes! Protect Daniel LaRusso. <laughs> What a weird movie. The 80s were weird. Okay, what are you doing? Can you, like, straighten out? Okay, there we go. See, so, yeah, I'm watching, like, I was, I'm kind of watching that, but at the same time, I'm like, this is, like, not my kind of movie that I watch, which makes me think, why do I want to watch Cobra Kai? Then I guess I feel bad for that white boy who got his butt kicked by Mr. Miyagi. And I just realized today that Mr. Miyagi is not the guy from Gremlins. And that Elizabeth Shue is the girlfriend of Ralph Macchio. 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 Of Ralph Macchio. Of Ralph Macchio in Karate Kid. I was watching, I was like, who is that? She looks so familiar. And then I looked it up and I was like, that's Elizabeth Shue? Like, she's like 12. I mean, she's probably actually like 20, playing a 16-year-old, but... I was like, what's, go what's going on here? Ralph Macchio. And she's got like fancy rich parents that like play night tennis. Like they're going on a date and the parents are like coming back and they're all like dressed for tennis. And I was like, are they playing night tennis? How bougie. She lives in like a big house. In Encino when he lives in Reseda. I don't know what that means, but it's apparently a big deal. Or at least it was in the 80s. Also, I didn't realize that movie came out in 1984. What else did I watch? I'm watching Carnival. Carnival A. Not, still really not clear about what's going on. Kind of got the gist of it. It's as good as I remember. As, as, like, beautifully done as I remember. I'm just like, wait, what, what, who is he? Wait, he's gotta do what now? It's one of those things. And I'm looking for, like, a new series to watch. Like, something funny. Like a comedy. Because I watched the show with Dan Levy and Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara and, um... Noah Reed, the Canadian show about the rich family who lives in the town with that's named after the creek that I can't say because it sounds too much like S H I T S C H I T T S Creek. Um Yeah, I see you YouTube senses waiting for me to mess up and say it. I'm not gonna. I watched that like twice in a row recently. I I saw it watching when it was airing. I didn't watch all of like I stopped watching it before the end of the season, of the last season, because I was like, I was so mad that they were ending it. Um, and I was like, if I don't finish it, it never ends. But I finally watched it, watched the finale. Then I went back and watched from when um, Noah Reed starts, because that's when I was like, okay, but look, this is like, this is like good. Um, and then when I was done with that, I went back and watched it from the beginning up into the part where Noah Reed starts and then I watched it all again. And today I started, like, I started from the beginning again, and I was like, no, 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 Adam. No, 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 no. I used to do that with Bob's Burgers. Like, as soon as I was done, I would just, like, immediately start watching it again. And The Simpsons. I need to watch. The Simpsons are all on Disney Plus now. That's what I should be watching. While I'm sitting in my office mindlessly crocheting. I 
watch that. I don't watch any new movies. I'm getting to that point now where it's like it's time to start watching Halloween movies. Because I do this Halloween, 31 days of Halloween where me and my sister, well I, I do it every year. My sister ends up watching like maybe a third of them with me because, um, I don't know. She's just like, she's not over at my house every day. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'm one, I'm like, I'm in a Halloween mood. If you can't tell by me making this ridiculous wreath. You're thinking like, what is he doing? Why is he still working on this? What's going on? I have plans. This wreath has to be huge to fit that skeleton. I want to watch Harry Potter too. And I'm trying to watch Lucifer because I was watching it when it was on TV. And then I stopped watching it for some reason. And then it went off Fox and then it came on Netflix. And I was like, oh, and I was, I was like, meh, I'll watch it when I watch it. But then they started showing the previews of the new season. And I was like, well, this looks a lot better than it did when it was on Fox. I assume they have like a much bigger budget now. But I started watching that. And then I was watching like four TV shows at once. to deal with the VMAs. I kept seeing all these things from the VMAs and I was like, wait, is this, was this like a, like a thing where they did like a bunch of like via satellite deals or was it like in person and I, know, I saw Lady Gaga looking ridiculous and I was like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know Lady Gaga. I wish she would make more movies. Like, okay, you prove that you can sing. Give me further proof that you can act. You know what I was thinking? I, I think I told Michelle this the other day. Like, we've had the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Amazing. We've had the Rocket Man movie. I didn't watch it. I don't know that. I know it didn't do as good as Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, David Bowie movie. I think I said this in another video, but I repeat myself constantly. David Bowie biopic, but Lady Gaga plays David Bowie. Would that not be inspired casting? And would she not kill that role? Not like David Bowie, like whole life story, just like 70s and 80s David Bowie, like androgynous era David Bowie. I think that would be so cool. I'm not even like into David Bowie. I wasn't into David Bowie when he was live, but I'm like, I need a biopic of him and, you know, with Lady Gaga. There's also a bunch of stuff coming out, I think this Friday, like the 4th on Hulu and like all the streaming stuff comes out on, there's like a bunch of new movies coming out that I want to watch and I'm just... I'm like, oh, there's so much I want to watch and so much I want to do, and I'm so exhausted. Oh, am I going to have just enough pipe cleaners to do this? That'd be something, huh? I hope you guys are liking these, these long-form videos. Like, I know, that, I know that this is literally just me doing the exact same thing over and over again. But, um, it gives me something to do. We get to talk. Um, you know, you get to hear all about how I wish there was a world where racism didn't happen and then I couldn't, like, watch a movie and be like, oh my god, that's so unrealistic. Not racism didn't happen. Like, the civil rights didn't have to happen. Like, we didn't have, we, there wasn't a need for civil rights because everybody just had them. That's a movie somebody should make. There's gotta be a movie like that, or a book. But 
what would the conflict be? I'm also already completely over the election. I, I want that done. I want it to be done. I want us to close the chapter. I want to move on. I want to pretend it never happened. Like, I just want it over. And I think, like, even if you're, like, super into politics, if you're, like, you know, you're super passionate about this candidate or that candidate or whatever, like, I think everybody at some point just becomes, like, oh, my God, can it just end? Please. Let's get everybody. Everybody go vote. Everybody make sure that I am... How did this, I, I never would have been able to do this. Look at this. A purple, a green, a black, and an orange. That's what I have left, and I have one pipe cleaner left. You better watch out. King of efficiency over here. Yeah, vote, get your voice out, let your voice be heard. Whatever happens, happens. At this point, I'm just like, whoever can get a handle on the the thing that's going, I almost, YouTube, YouTube, you're trying me, YouTube, you're trying to get me to say it. Whoever can get a handle on the current situation, I'm like, at this point, I'm just like, hey, let's, let's just get a handle on this. Okay, so all of these are done, and now I'm going to cut ribbons and add the ribbons to my bundles and then wire all my bundles into there, and, you know, that'll be that. I think I'm probably going to take a break for the day and cut all these ribbons and get them all ready and then come back later after my battery has charged because it's almost dead. And we will continue working on this wreath. Okay, so off camera, I have spoken to my mom, called Michelle, she didn't answer, I left her a threatening voicemail. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm going to continue doing this because I'm awake and I'm alert. So yeah, I made all my little bundles. Those are all done. Uh, 24 inches. I don't know how many I got. I think I ended up with 19 because I kind of... Went through my ribbons. I'm using this polka dot from a craft outlet. Um, I have three of these left and the Harlequin from Dollar Tree. These are cut at 14 inches because I can't find my 12 inch ruler. Both of these also cut 14 inches and both of these are from craft outlet. And the Dollar Tree ribbon is so much nicer than the craft outlet ribbon again. Pairing the green with the orange and then the black with the green polka dot. I'm just making these little bundles because all of these are going to have to be individually wired in because there's not that much room left on that wreath for me to wire anything into the greenery. I'm putting those in, I'm pulling these tails in opposite directions, giving them a nice little bend. Tossing them off to the side. I think I only got, I know I got nine of the polka dot. I think I only got eight of the, this one, because I was cutting on 14 inches and there's only nine feet on one roll. So yeah. I finally finished off. I think I have a little, yeah, I have a little bit of this one left, but I finally finished off this other one. Uh, you know, I love glitter. It's my favorite color. Um, I'm really glad those ribbons are gone because as you can see, there's glitter everywhere again. Yeah, 
and laying these on top of each other, pinching them, and then sticking my bundle on, my big loopy bundle. I think this is gonna look insanely crazy. Moving them around before I twist it, and then just giving it a like, you know, two or three twists. I call my mom every night around seven o'clock before she gets ready to like pack it in for the night. Like she's already, she was already in bed. I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, ah, I'm watching. Uh, she's like, yeah, kind of half asleep, probably, you know, on her second cup of sleepy Tom tea because she's wild. Um, I'm um, just watching, um, I don't know, something about Ted Bundy. And I was like, really? And she's like, well, it's on. I'm not really watching. I don't know. I was like, could you watch something else? And then like halfway through talk to her, she's like, all right, I stopped watching Ted Bundy and now I'm watching something about Princess Diana. And I said, you know, neither one of those stories end well for Ted Bundy or Princess Diana. The people's princess. Yeah, save this ribbon. needs to say like this ribbon that's fine that's a canvas ribbon it's it's fine perfect this one is like satin you can't really tell from the pictures maybe you can and I just don't pay attention I need to pay attention because I don't want any I don't want to buy any more of this or this or you know that well no this is the Dollar Tree one the Dollar Tree one's really nice Michelle doing that she can't answer the phone. It's 7.30 on a Monday. What is she doing? Taking care of her children? So inconsiderate. My mom was like, what are you going to do tonight? And I said, well, I'm either going to go lay down and watch something and then get up and crochet for two hours. I'm gonna lay down and then get up and work on my wreath. Something. She said, you're not just gonna like lay down and do nothing. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. Not on tonight, sis. I'm at that point of the year where I just, I can't, I can't not do anything. Why do I have so many bundles of, of tubing left over? I must have made 17, one, two, three, four. Use 17. Did I get three extra somehow out of that pack? I don't know. Um, I'm at that point of the year where I'm like, okay, well, if you're not working on videos, if you're not doing this, you need to be working on Christmas presents, you need to be brainstorming ideas, and like I like staying busy. But at the same time, I wish I was one of those people that like, you know, like, you ask them what they did today, and they're like, ugh, I'm still in bed from this morning. I got up, peed, had vodka, now I'm in bed again. I've been in bed watching TV all day. I've just been laying on the sofa, not doing anything. I, like, um, I just kicked back with a book. And I'm like, wait, you read a book and you weren't doing any? You, like, you, I mean, you listened to a book while you were doing stuff. And they're like, nope, just read a book. Like every time I talk to my mom, she's like, oh, I watched this. And I'm like, what were you doing while you're watching it? She's like, petting the dog. And I was like, what? What else? And she's like, nothing. Just hanging out, sitting here. But like, what else? I think I'm going to save these and maybe work them into the center of one of my moves. Spoiler alert. Oh, that would be cool, huh? Like just a... Right, right, right. So I'm going to twist those together a little bit and just, um, geez, there's nowhere for me to even throw stuff anymore. I kind of like doing the, like doing the bundles like this because when I do them the other way, I end up with, uh, pipe cleaners up here that I have to cover, but this way the pipe cleaner is going to go to the back. I can just bend them under. So that's kind of cool. 
tank in here. I think I need to put the skeleton on. I really don't want to. We, did, we already decided he's gonna go over here. So I'm just gonna start placing these around and leave this. Cause he's, I mean, he's huge. Like he's way too, mm. I'm using him for this wreath. Like I don't care if he's way too big. He's, he's going in this wreath. That, that's just, that's the tea. good we get to struggle me instead of watching me struggle with like one bow i'm gonna be struggling with like 30 of them perfect I need like some more over there. I need some more everywhere. Oh crap. Y'all. He's going in. He's going in. He's going in. Okay, so this is more or less where we left everything yesterday, except I took the skeleton out. I took every bundle of ribbons out. Um, I put the skeleton back in, and then I put all the ribbons back in. I... Hmm. I was like, hey, when I sit down and have this video, I better have an explanation on why I did this. I hung it up and it didn't look right. It is because the skeleton is heavy, he's on one side. When I hang it, it leans this way, like this, kind of like it is right now. Um, also, he wasn't in there straight. The ribbons weren't evenly distributed, so by not putting him in in the beginning, like I was, like I said I should have, I ended up doing double the amount of work. But I'm happy with it now. And there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of stuff, it's just a lot of, um, ribbons and things. And none down here, which I don't know how that happened, but I can cut another something of something. Anyway, um, I cut some big 4-inch ribbon into 12-inch pieces. I'm going to fold these in half and pleat them up nice and neat. And I did have pipe cleaners somewhere. Okay, there you go. Oh, I love these. Love these. Just cutting these pipe cleaners in half because I'm not going to wire these in. Because I feel like I'm going to have to pull them too far into the wreath to get them where I want them. So I'm just going to use this pipe cleaner to make sort of a pick. And I just dropped every one of those damn pipe cleaners on the ground. One, two. Okay. This wreath is too big for my table. I mean, most wreaths are too big for my table, and this one is like twice as big. So I'm just going to make these into little ribbon tails. And I'm, I'm going to glue these in. I don't know where yet, though. So I should probably figure that out first. I know I want one, like, over here. Let's see if I go to... If I, if I were to wire this in... Let me see how far I would have to go. Basically where his neck is. So if it was where his neck is, this is what we would see sticking out. Which is basically nothing. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit. Okay, what side of you wants to be gluey? Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna come in here. I'm just kind of push that in. And then once 
once it's dry, I'll be able to spread it out. And that is grabbing onto mesh and tubing and ribbons and everything. So it's gonna stay pretty good. And I can move those around. So I'm gonna go through and do that. And I'm going to add in my flowers. These are the ones I got from Walmart. They were 25 cents on clearance before they were even out. Don't know why. Don't really care because clearance works out good for me. I mean, they were they were obviously in the wrong spot. You know, they were marked wrong, but hey, I'm alright with that. All right, I'm gonna kind of furl and unfurl him just to get these in here. So pretty much, if you're watching the short version of this, all I'm gonna do is kind of stick these around. And then I have some ornaments I'm gonna stick in. I'm gonna get the rest of my ribbons in. I'm not doing a bow because obviously. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to get a couple of bundles of these bushes. I don't know how many I'm gonna use. My glue pot is not very hot. And the only, I, I had, like I think I had a bundle wired to him before this one this one's not wired to him it's just awfully close to his hip and this one right here oh, God, yeah. this one's actually wired to his shoulder just because i couldn't get to the frame because you know there's a lot of stuff so we, want a, we definitely want a rose up here right yeah. so i'm just going to go ahead and add all those things and come back when that's done Are they gone? Super secret, super secret long version time. Oh my God, you guys. Just between us and super secret long version viewers. What a total disaster. I, uh, I, I, I finished this, well, finished this last night and I was like, okay, let me hang it up and see how it looked. Then I hung it up and I was like, this is completely like, nowhere near in any sense of the word straight like no nothing i do no no amount of like photoshopping afterward like it was that's how bad it was i was like i can't even photoshop this straight i can't take a picture and crop it straight so i messed with it messed with it messed with it and this morning i was just like you know what nope so i took everything out and i think i might have started taking stuff out last night Took everything out, hung the wreath, the bear wreath with just the mesh on the wall, and then got my skeleton in. And then just now, before I sat down to start filming, I started pushing everything, putting the bundles back where I thought they needed to go. But it's like, I get that that happens, you know, sometimes things don't work out. But this was just like, I was like, how did I misjudge this so badly? But I really think it's the weight of the skeleton that's pulling the wreath to one side. Which maybe everybody was right when they said, that's kind of big for a wreath. And I said, no, it's not. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not an award-winning wreath maker. I mean, neither am I, but you know. <clears throat> so yeah. So it is now the first. This is the longest I've ever spent on a wreath, I think. And I'm just like, I want it done. I want it done because I want to. I want it to be done, but I also want it done, and then like. I'm just going to go put it outside and be like $25. Whoever wants this. Not really, because it doesn't even come with the cost of stuff in it. But you know what I mean? It's one of those things where I'm like, oh, can it just be over now? Yeah, so it was an ordeal. 
and it continues to be an ordeal. But I like it. I do wish a skeleton was a my damn glue gun just fell on the floor of the door of the business. Don't get that. Um wish a skeleton was a little shorter, a little smaller, maybe um a three-foot skeleton in a 20-inch wreath is too big, but he looks cool. That's all that matters, right? He looks cool. He's functional. And I know a lot of people who just would have been hung that up and been like, ah, oh, well, it's crooked, but, you know, let somebody else deal with that. I can't do that. I was just like, nope, nope, not today. Nope, 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 nope. this needs to be pulled over this way but yeah it's coming together today I went on like the adventure of a lifetime which it wasn't really um I went to Dollar Tree to go look for I don't know what I was looking for oh I think I was going to get like some things to put over the you know how I like to put like the styrofoam balls or the skulls or the pumpkins or whatever it is I was going to look for something like that, but then I was like, wait, I don't really need that because you can't see it. And when I needed cable ties, because I was going to try to cable tie um, the skeleton in, he's in there with regular florist wire, stem wire. So they didn't have that. I went to Dollar General looking for cable ties. I bought some there that were the exact same length as the ones I had here. Should have checked that before I left, but whatever. And then I went to Tractor Supply looking for other cable ties, and they were like, they had some, but they were, it was like $6 for a bag of cable ties. I'm sorry, Tractor Supply? No. Maybe if I was a fancy farmer, like you think people are down here, but that store doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know, I don't know how it's open, first of all. Nobody's ever in there. I think the most people I've seen in there is like three other people. Like three other customers. And everything is just so ungodly expensive. Like, I don't know about, like, I don't know how much tractor crap costs. I don't know how much like canine whatever or cow vaccines or whatever all that crap they sell in there. Like, I don't know how much all of that costs. But like the decorative stuff, you are crazy. They had a sign. It was a big sign. Like a big tin sign. And it said, um... It said it was like a like a motel sign or something. It was cute. And I was like, it had I could see that it had a yellow sticker on it. So I was like, oh, it's on clearance. Um, it's on clearance for $49.99. Marked down like $10. I said, so... This isn't so much of a clearance... Like, if you're going to clear something out, I want 90% off. Give me 90% off. But no. So I left there and brought my sister over here for a little bit. And then we worked on, well, I worked on trying to get this in here. She tried to help, but... wasn't like a thing that I need like helping wasn't help, getting her to help me wasn't helping anything because I was like I can't like you're no matter even if I had like the best best known skeleton skeleton attachment expert in the country over here it still would have been something I would have had to eventually have to figure out by myself because there's like not enough room for three people to try to get this damn skeleton in here so she left I brought her home I came home and had a panic attack because why not it's been a while. I called my mom and I was like, I can't breathe. Um, I didn't call my mom, I texted her. I was like, I can't breathe, I'm having a panic attack. She's like, do you need to call me? And I was like, no, 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 just just tell it, just letting you know what's going on. Just giving you the info on what's going on over here. Um, I don't know what was going on, I was hot. I mean, it was, again, I know I talked all day yesterday about how hot it is. But, like, I went to three places today. It was just like, I can't leave again for the rest of the week. It's it's too much. So, I when 
I got back, I was like feeling panicky, immediately got in the bed, threw all the covers off the bed because I was so hot, laid there and waited, and um, I feel like when I'm playing, like if I play one of those stupid, like, you know, not, it's not Candy Crush, it's like Toon Blast or one of those stupid games, like it makes me focus on something else besides freaking out. So I did that, uh, took a nap, woke up and I was like, okay, now I'm just super hungry. So I ate and then I started working on this. Putting this back together. listening to this like scary stories I, I never listen to podcasts but I'm listening to this like scary stories one um, and it's some guy with a creepy voice like I'm like these stories aren't very scary but this guy has definitely got a creepy ow got like a creepy get this out of my face a creepy voice I can't even remember like I can't even tell you like go go check it out because I don't even know what it was um Something about like Otis, Otis Gyrie's scary, scary stories or something. I haven't been impressed by any of them so far. And I don't think they're meant to be like super scary stories. Like, I don't think I'm, I'm supposed to be like losing control of my bowel scared. I just think they're supposed to just be like, ooh, spooky. But then I was just listening to one while I was putting all this stuff on here and like, they kept like leading up to something. And I was like, oh man, I was like, I can't wait to see what this reveal is. And then it just kind of ended and I was like, all right, well, ain't that my life. Yeah, see, there's nothing right here. I think I'm gonna have to stick something right there. But you know what, I actually have a, I have a streamer right here. Yeah, I can just stick that in there, I guess. Where are you going? I just had a spot for you. Here? Okay. I think he needs to have like, why? These freaking loops are like all over his hands. My sister was like, can't you turn his hand around so he can hold something? And I was like, um, no. He doesn't have that kind of posability. That would be cool if I could actually get that to stay on there, but... Terrible night last night. I could not. I was so hot. I was like, oh my god, it's so hot, it's so hot. I and mean, it wasn't hot. It was like, I had the thermostat on 62. And I was like, I'm sweaty, I'm sweaty, I'm hot, I'm hot. It wasn't hot. It's just me having like a, I don't know, I think I'm like menopausal. That's gotta be it. Couldn't get to sleep. Woke up all grumpy because I had a bad night. Well, I got like 300 more of these, but I'm gonna try to get over there. Alright, these are my extra little that I had left over. I'm gonna take one because I see there's a ribbon tail right here.
My arms are killing me from moving this thing around. See, there's nothing. Oh no, what was that? Okay, I don't need that. See, there's nothing here. So, I'm just gonna glue this in. Okay, well, I went a little deep with that, but at least we know it'll stay. No. No, 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 not today. All right, I got my ornaments. We all know the... What is it? We all know the... Ugh. like facing out but at the same time I'm just like let's just get them in there when I was going to sleep last night I was like hey I remember a movie it's a movie for the so I'm like laying in bed about to fall asleep like not like laying in bed gonna fall asleep pretty soon like I am like struggling to keep my eyes open and I remember this movie I'm like, there's a movie, and there's a woman, and she's like an assassin or something, and she's in like a, a clock tower, and she's trying to kill somebody who she's in love with. So I'm like, oh, I'm never going to remember to look this up tomorrow. So I wake up today, and I'm like, I need to look up that movie. Spent, I don't know, like 45 minutes searching female assassin movies, female assassin clock tower Clock tower. You know, I'm searching all this stuff. Can't find it anywhere. And I'm like, I should text my sister because she would probably know. But I'm like, there's a scene. There's a scene in the movie where there was a blind guy. And he gives somebody money, like he's paying for something, and somebody says, oh, you gave me a 5 instead of a 10, or you gave me a 10 instead of a 20, whatever. And the woman says, no, he didn't. And she calls him a snake. Um, so, like, I go off of that, and I search, you know, blind guy folding money, and apparently it's a, it's a thing about how people who can't see, they fold their $5 bills, like, in half, and their $10 bills, like, long ways, and the singles stay single, and the 20s are... You know, it's it's some um, it's this whole system. One, two. Did I lose a ball, y'all? Maybe. Um. So it finally pops up as it's Eye of the Beholder with Ashley Judd, which I was like, I know Ashley Judd is in this movie. Like I just kept thinking about Ashley Judd. Um. So I started watching that, and it's set in. Well, it came. I don't know what. It's, I'm sure it's set like in present day at the time which was 1999 and Katie Lang's in it which is weird and Ian McGregor is like an FBI agent and he's tracking Ashley Judd who is a serial killer but like they keep doing like all this like he's he's like on this laptop that has all these screens that fold out and he's like doing like a video conference with Katie Lang and she's like you never have to come into the office anymore you're always on your computer and I was like that's a computer I was like, I thought that was a robot. I thought that was a very large robot. What is that? I'm not using these bat ornaments because they look ridiculous. Oh, you know what? The other one fell in half. I just realized that. Come on. I think it's so funny watching movies like that where, you know, like if you, if you go, well, like, stop this after you, well, don't stop this. Finish watching it, comment, like, subscribe, buy a wreath, all that good stuff. And then go watch The Net with Sandra Bullock, it's like so, so ridiculously outdated. Like, I think the stuff in Eye of the Beholder is supposed to like, oh, it's it's future stuff. Like, it's stuff only the government has. And like, looking at it, it's like, it's just like, what, what were they thinking? They're like, oh yeah, we're using this advanced technology. I was like, advanced technology? Yeah, he's got like a um it starts off and he's got like a sniper rifle and he's like pointing it at this guy and i was like oh i thought he was a good guy but it's a camera the sniper rifle's a camera because somehow that's useful i 
don't know if he's the FBI. He's like, I don't know what he is. Some, whatever. But I started watching it and then I was just like, I need to take a break from this stupid movie. And I meant to text my sister and tell her that I was watching it. Because I was like, what is that movie? I was like, if anybody knows, do I want to add those black ones? I think I'm done, y'all. I mean, there's just like, do I need a bow? What are we doing? You know what? I'm just going to add these. What, what else am I going to do with these? I remember, I remember so clearly, and it's not even her in the Watchtower, it's Ian McGregor in the Watchtower. And it's not a Watchtower, it's a, like a, 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 like a, is that a bell tower? What is that? Clock tower? Clock tower, not a Watchtower. Oof. Why are these two directly next to each other? See, I was trying to watch that, and then I was just like, eh, let me go try to get some work done. Let me go try to finish this ridiculous skeleton wreath. He needs a hat or something. He needs a bow tie. I'm just like, I'm over it. But I think he looks cute. I'm glad I added the black and white. I might need some more. I might need a bow. But I think that is actually it. His head kept popping off last night, too. That was another reason why I had to step away. I like his foot up in there. <laughs> so, yeah, that is a way too big Halloween wreath that doesn't hang straight. Well, it does, kind of. I just need to move, because I, I have two of the... Should I do that now? I have two of these together. I need to go back and trim all those and fold them under and push these under. Lots of stuff to still do, apparently. This is, like, right here, and I need it to be closer to over here. But there's no... Is there... Oh, I guess I could try to, like... Because if you have something... if you, Like, these stupid things from the ornaments... If you have something that's weighing one side of the wreath down, because I have like one that has a Christmas sign on it, it's weighing down, like this is the center right here. But because the skeleton is hanging, where is he, is he over here? He's hanging and he's pulling it this way, so the center point needs to be moved off to the side so that when it hangs, it hangs straight. I'm gonna go back cut all those off I may add a bow I might not I need to get it up and look at it but yeah this was like the longest process the longest video oh god it's so heavy he might get a he might get a bow tie or something we'll see all right guys thanks for um joining me for this uh I have a feeling this video is going to be seven and a half hours long because that's what it feels like. But maybe it won't be so bad. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye. And you say bye too. Bye guys. I'm a creepy, creepy skeleton. I'm a creepy, creepy skeleton. Bye. Spooky, scary skeleton.